It's getting to be that time of year, the time when the greatest athletes and the brightest minds emerge to compete in the mightiest event, the Nerd Bowl. Now in 2019, people don't have time for in-depth videos on a single topic. They need their science fast, and they need it in bite-sized pieces. That's why we've compiled for you four scientific tips for the perfect play. Our first tip is to choose your football wisely. Originally, footballs were made from animal skins. But if you take a close look at a modern synthetic football, it has lots of little bumps which increase its surface area. The surface area increases its friction, making it easy to grip, even by those with the slipperiest of claws. Fun fact, we use these rough surface concepts in our research here at Lawrence Livermore National Lab. We recently published a paper that reported on a new, creative way to roughen the surface of a brain implant. The rougher surface on this brain implant device gave it more surface area with which to make contact in the brain. This let it better record and stimulate brain activity. These kinds of biomedical devices help us better understand how our brains work and ultimately come up with new treatments for neurological disorders. So now that you've chosen the perfect football, it's time for our second step. When you go to throw the ball, add lots of spiral. Most people think that the reason you spin the ball when you throw it is to make it go faster. Well, that's not really the whole story. I mean, if you think about a constant amount of energy that you're giving the ball when you throw it, some of that energy is in forward motion, some of it is in rotational motion. If you have a fixed amount of energy, then rotating it will slow down the speed of the ball when you first throw it. So why do we add spirals? It's actually for stability. A spiraled football acts like a gyroscope, prevents it from wobbling in the air. If the ball is wobbling, it's gonna have lots of surface area, catch lots of wind resistance, and that will slow it down. So the spiral helps its shape be aerodynamic and keep that perfect arc on its way to the target. After catching the spiral, our third tip for the day is to maximize your momentum. Now, momentum is your mass, or how heavy you are, times your velocity, how fast you're going. To get to the end zone quickly, you wanna be going very fast. But to be difficult to slow down, you need to be pretty heavy. Now, a professional running back can run 40 yards in about four and a half seconds. That comes out to be about eight meters per second. Their typical weight might be 222 pounds, which comes out right at 100 kilograms. It's really nice of them to choose round numbers for us. Multiplying these together, you come out with 800 kilogram meters per second of momentum for a running back. To have the same amount of momentum, a much smaller object, like a 25 gram mouse, would have to be traveling much faster, 4,000 times faster. On the other end of the spectrum, a giant 10,000 kilogram T-Rex could achieve the same momentum while moving 100 times slower. All three of these objects would take the same amount of force applied for that same amount of time to drag them to a halt. Special learning with Leland pro tip, make sure you have enough energy for the game and increase your mass for extra momentum by eating lots of donuts. I can't imagine donuts are gonna slow you down at all during the game. The final key to the perfect play Use statistics to select the ideal strategy. Now in football, there are two main types of plays. There are passing plays, where the ball is thrown, and there are rushing plays, where the ball is simply carried. They're called rushing plays to distract from the fact that, for the majority of the three-hour game, all of the players are standing around in no hurry whatsoever. On average, a rushing play resulted in about a gain of four and a half yards. Now the average for passing plays is about seven and a half yards. So if your play, your passing play averages seven and a half yards, while a rushing play averages four and a half yards, should you always choose to throw the ball? The average isn't the whole story. Passes give you a higher reward, but they're also higher risk. Statisticians use a concept known as standard deviation to describe the spread in data like this. How far away from the average the real numbers tend to fall. So rushing plays have a standard deviation of about seven yards, so they might average four and a half, but 11 and a half or negative three and a half are both within the range of things that you usually see. A team might choose a risky play with a high standard deviation, a passing play, if they're behind and they need to catch up, or if they want to surprise the opponent. They're trying to play it safe, 
then you'll see more plays with the smaller standard deviation, the rushing plays. Fun fact, so this data set had 40,000 different plays to analyze. For what we handle here at Lawrence Livermore every day, that's actually tiny. We just got a brand new supercomputer that ranked number two in the world. It has 17,000 GPUs on it. Each one has several gigabytes worth of memory. We could analyze massive data sets of computer simulations, experimental results, anything you can think of on our new supercomputer. Let us know in the comments what you'd like to see next, maybe some more statistics, more about our supercomputers. Please be sure to follow Lawrence Livermore National Lab on all social media platforms so you can catch the Nerd Bull. And thanks for watching.